final sign before the rapture is happening. One of the most obvious signs that the rapture is near has to do with the fact that the Antichrist has appeared and is gaining strength and power on a massive global scale. Yet no one is paying attention, due to good reasons. That has more to do with divisions among religious scholars and leaders and the presence of a wide variety of interpretations of the book of Revelation. Regardless of what you heard or what you have been told, the Antichrist is not a mere person with top interpersonal skills to convince people to follow him, but is rather a collective of persons that heads and manages a collection of powerful organizations that combined are fulfilling the prophecies with regard to the Antichrist at a rather fast pace. The Antichrist is simply Satan working through people and organizations to achieve his plans of taking Jesus Christ's place on the throne for a thousand years after the second advent. Satan's goal has always been, and always will be, to counter God's plans for humanity by driving people away from believing in Jesus Christ as a prophet and Messiah, and more importantly, to coerce people into living a life that is contradictory to the teachings and directions preached by Jesus Christ, which are clearly stated in the Bible, and more specifically, the New Testament. We do predict that a single person will eventually appear, or rather finally expose his face as the master of all these organizations and groups, once they achieve the major goal of bringing most of the people in the world under the reign of a single school of thought that is satanic and anti-God, and anti-Abrahamic. Religions at core, these religions are Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Christianity and Islam believe that Jesus Christ is a prophet and the Messiah, while Jews do not believe that. However, their lack of belief is part of God's plan and program for the Jews and Israel. They were chosen by God for a reason. So who, or rather what is the Antichrist? And what are the signs that the Antichrist has achieved many if not most of his goals in the past 100 years? The Bible clearly predicts that an evil dictator will come to power before the end of the world and will charm his way into power. The Antichrist is thought of among religious scholars as a highly skilled politician and a very convincing inspirational speaker, able to exploit demonic magnetism to mesmerize and elude people out of their freedom, morality, and belief in God and Jesus Christ as the Messiah. He will succeed in convincing people that he is the Messiah and Savior of humanity. Matthew chapter 24, verse 5, For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, and also 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, He will force the world to embrace the mark of the beast, 666, and he represents the symbol of all rejection of God's will. The Bible clarifies that Jesus Christ currently sits on the throne of David in heaven, and the Lord will sit on this throne in Jerusalem during the millennial reign. So what does Satan want? He wants that throne and aims to achieve it via the Antichrist. However, as the Bible states, he will struggle to seize it even after capturing the third temple of Jerusalem during an invasion of the Holy Land and utilizing it as his base. Jesus called this the abomination of desolation. The details are in Matthew chapter 24 verses 15 and 16, Luke chapter 1 verse 32, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 11, 1 John 2 22, 4 and 3. The Antichrist will unveil his true self as he rises to power. Here are some of the signs of the arrival of the Antichrist. These are from Daniel chapter 11, verse 36 through 39. He will exalt himself. He will heed his inner voice above others. He will be hostile toward the true God. He will exalt human logic above faith. He will prosper for a season and be loved. He will not desire women. He will not follow the faith of his fathers. He will viciously persecute true believers. He will think of himself as greater than God. He will become increasingly lawless. 
He will honor military power above faith. He will love wealth. He will hoard precious things. He will become a man of war. He will wage a war on all people of faith. He will enter the restored temple. He will declare himself above God. The Antichrist is simply a false messiah and a major tool used by Satan. The only force in the world that is holding the Antichrist back from establishing a satanic kingdom on earth is the restrainer. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7 And you know what is restraining him now, so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. There are several interpretations about the nature of the restrainer. However, all churches agree that he is still powerful enough to suppress the spiritual powers of darkness seeking to promote the man of sin. However, there are signs that the restrainer is becoming weaker because of the mounting signs that the Antichrist is gaining strength. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. In God's program, the rapture and the accompanying judgment will not start until two things happen. A global rebellion occurs and the Antichrist is revealed. This leads us to an important matter. As we said earlier, the Antichrist is working for Satan and he has established organizations and groups of people who are fulfilling the prophecies and are paving the way for the Antichrist to reveal himself. From the signs we stated earlier, which are clarified in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verses 36 through 39, we have concluded that indeed there are organizations in the world that are directly involved in creating a world that perfectly fits the Antichrist and thus Satan. Here are some of these organizations. Number one, the United Nations Security Council is controlled by five nations, America, Russia, China, France, and the United Kingdom. These five nations are officially and by law secular, and in the case of China and France, atheist. This council has the legal power to decide the fate of any country or group of people in the world. In fact, China, Russia, and America can invade and destroy or blackmail and extort any country at any time, and no one nor nation on the planet can stop them nor get in their way. Technically speaking, whoever controls the UN Security Council rules the world. Number two, the IMF is a very powerful organization that is used by the five members of the UN Security Council to decide which countries will benefit from the global economy the most. It is also used to impose sanctions on nations, organizations, groups of people, and even individuals. Additionally, it is an atheism promotion organization because all the money it lends to poor and weak nations is conditional. The main conditions often have to do with spreading immorality, which they call modern freedom. Most poor and weak nations who borrowed or were forced to borrow from the IMF to survive ended up going deeper into debt and became reliant on one or more of the five members of the UN Security Council to stay afloat. They simply become slaves and their economy and resources become owned by someone else. Remember that as mentioned in the Bible, the Antichrist controls the world economy and decides who can sell and buy and who does not. Number three, SWIFT is an organization with headquarters in Belgium. It provides a global financial transaction system that is owned and controlled by a group of nations called the G10, which are Belgium, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, America, Switzerland, and Sweden. This system gives these nations, or more particularly, the richest and most powerful ones among them, US, UK, and France, the power to cut off any country on the planet from the global economy 
and drive them into poverty and even starvation by their other means of sanctioning nations. To please the G10 group of nations, a nation must move toward secularism and atheism, hand over their economies as pawns, and crack down on all those who oppose the establishment of a one-world order, the Antichrist wet dream. Allow us to be clear here. The G10 nations are all by law secular or atheist nations. As for their Christian portions of the population, they are mostly Christian only on their ID cards and mostly atheists or secular. This is a fact, and there are detailed surveys to prove this. Number four, the endless consortium of organizations that promote via lobbying governments and the media for the legalization and normalization of everything related, homosexuality, abortion, euthanasia, prostitution, drugs, sexualization of children, and you name it. In addition to other sadist agendas, such as giving the rich more power and control over the people in government, let's call them the radical left. And mind you, there are those who are supposedly practicing Christians and even right-wing radicals who also support these agendas. It is a paradox. Number five, intruding, boastful, control freaks, technology giants. They are becoming more and more mere radical left-wing anti-religion organizations or racism and hate promoters that contribute to human misery. The Bible is not anti-technology in progress, but it is against the use of such means for the spread of darkness and all in any of its forms. As great the internet and technology have been, today it has become a weapon, a tool for defamation and disinformation, and you name it. It is not the fault of the technology itself, but rather it is the fault of the people who use it for evil purposes and the gatekeepers who allow such evil to prevail. Social media platforms and the internet provides people with merely empty pages and spaces to fill with their own content. But somehow about 4% of all content on the internet is pornography, and 25% of all traffic and browsing is pornography related. The same percentages go towards criminal activities, bullying, hate speech, racism, incitement, and war propaganda. About 5% is dedicated to atheism and anti-religion propaganda. We bet that it would be very hard for the Antichrist and Satan to reach the 8 billion people on the planet today without the internet and technology, or at least radical leftist anti-God gatekeepers. Meanwhile, Christian organizations with good intentions towards humanity have become almost non-existent and are mostly replaced by ignorant right-wing organizations that are just stupid, racist, Islamophobics, and warmongers. Jesus Christ will destroy the Antichrist and his insidious system at his second coming. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, comment, and ring the bell so that every time we upload a video, you get notified.